Uh, reporting in progress for those who are not here live. Welcome, welcome, Claire Wasserman, founder and author of Ladies Get Paid. Astrid, I am going to bring you pinned to the first screen. I'm going to have you just share a little bit of what you learned in getting that job. Give us hope, girl. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, calling in from my hotel room because I just took a little one night away from Boston to Western Mass. So um, I have been unemployed for the last three months, a little over three months, and I just landed a job this past week. Um, it's a exciting role in marketing still um, out of my industry. So taking a, taking a leap of faith out of um, my comfort zone, I'd been in the electrical industry for the last 11 years. So something new moving into healthcare industry and software. Um, so something new. Um, I was looking for a job last year and had already redid my resume when I was doing the job search last year and landed the role that I had just been laid off from. Um, and in this kind of unemployment time, I did take some kind of mental health time as well. So I appreciate the time off that I've had. And this group has been great to really connect with everybody. But one of the things I was really actively doing was um, taking the time. There's a lot of recruiters out there that are um, doing some really great tips and tricks on um, TikTok and like good recruiters, not the ones that have never done recruiting. If you really do need to do your homework, but the ones that have worked in companies and truly do recruiting, there's ones that really give some great resume help and advice, and it's all out there. So I did some stuff that they were talking about, but I was on a um, inspiration summit day from the news, and I listened to this phenomenal um, speaker, and she was talking about um, improving your pitch. And so that's something that I had been really working on a lot, just really condensing it. I realized my pitch was just too long, and I was just talking too much about what was on my resume, I was just anxious and nervous anyways. And so I just was like, I need to condense it and make it myself more comfortable. And she had talked about something I had really had never heard anyone else talking about and was talking about bringing your traits and really what you bring to a role into your pitch. And she brought up like a whole list of traits and she's like, what do you want to get across to your um, interviewers? interviewees, whomever you're talking to. Um, and um, that's really not in your resume. And it was something that I had never thought about. And so she's like, bring out 10 um, traits or um, things that you want to talk about and make sure that you want to get it known across um, and write those down and find ways to bring that in, whether that's in your pitch, whether that's in your answers and your responses to the questions that they, they um, ask you. But bring those out there. So I reworked my pitch and I wanted to make sure that I got across to someone that was speaking to me, that I'm collaborative, that I'm adaptable, that I'm approachable and I'm organized. And so that's what I made sure that now my pitch started with those four things. So when I start to talk and during an interview, I start, I, you know, wove those into my pitch and then I moved into at a high level, here's my career background. And I had tweaked my whole pitch to not really what was in my resume, but just what I really wanted them to see that wasn't talked about in my resume. And I really started to notice that when I was being interviewed, it was the questions were coming across different, that questions that were being asked to me were completely different. And there wasn't like, tell me about a time that this happened. It was just different questions that were coming just because I had probably already asked I had already dressed, sorry, those questions that were going to be possibly coming down the line anyways, with just already addressing some of those in the pitch by bringing around, like, I'm collaborative, I'm approachable, I'm adaptable, like, I already talked about who I am. I love that. I love that. Amazing. I also would love for you, if you don't mind, just focusing, telling us a little bit about that quote, leap of faith, that transition, wanting to pivot. Um, how did you, because there were questions that were submitted for this job seeker support group, specifically where people were curious about demonstrating transferable skills. Do you, and I know we didn't discuss this beforehand, so sure. put me on the spot a little bit, but can you talk about, I mean, there's one thing that's like leap of faith, but there's also like putting in the work to make, you know, to demonstrate that you are ready to go and the learning curve will be minimal. So how big of a gap was the difference 
between like how stark of a change was this going to be? And then do you have any advice for, for folks who are curious how they can also make that pivot? Um, I definitely don't know the industry. So the industry itself is healthcare and electrical, very different. Um, I will need to learn the healthcare industry. I will say I've had plenty of surgeries myself, so I, hopefully I can bring some of that <laughs> back into it. Um, so there is going to be a learning curve and that did come up in some of my interviews. Um, and they did ask like, how are you going to, um, bring yourself into learning our industry? And I had to learn the electrical industry too. I want to know what I'm working on and I ask questions and I, I want to understand what I'm doing. So that's just a curious knowledge myself. So yes, I'm going to have to dive in and learn. And there's going to be a time where I'm treading. Um, marketing skills are, you know, hopefully transferable regardless. Um, but the stuff that I'm going to be working on, um, the software that I'm working on, some of it is stuff that I've worked on before. Um, so that is at least easily transferable. And um, doing audience marketing, I don't know the audience as well, but that type of stuff is transferable. So it's easy to do that. Um, and the, the team that I'm working with seems very eager and interested and excited to have me. And so hopefully it's just going to be jumping in and going from there. We have a, a visitor. Hold on. We got to, we got to, <laughs> the elusive Phoebe cat is here and she, she never likes to be around. So the fact that she jumped in, this is a good omen for all of us. Um, <laughs> so there you go. And trust me, I was not a cat person, but you know, how could you not be with this little munchkin? Oh. <laughs> um, I think that's great. I mean, some things I want to pick up on from what you just said was, you know, the demonstrating that you have um, adapted to a learning curve before, right? Um, that's great so that, you know, they can feel confident that you may not have done this exact thing before, but you have been in a situation similar where you needed to bring that kind of curious mindset. I also loved that you mentioned the personal aspect of this, which was sort of the, the whole point of what you were talking about today in terms of the personality traits, but that you had unfortunately slash fortunately now, you know, personal experience in the healthcare uh, as a, uh, on the patient side. So bringing that perspective uh, and, and that also demonstrates a, a higher purpose, I think too, on um, that you're going to be motivated uh, from a very deeply empathetic um, perspective is, is interesting and it makes you stand out. So for everybody who's concerned that being uh, a, a non-traditional candidate is a downside, it could be one way of looking at it. You could also say it makes you stand out. Same thing for anybody who, you know, didn't go to an Ivy League, let's say, and they feel like, oh, how can I compete with everybody who has like, let's say all these Harvard MBAs are applying. Well, you're going to stand out because you're not the Harvard MBA. And you're also going to demonstrate the scrappiness and the resourcefulness and the gutsiness of applying for a job that might be quote intimidating. So I do think for everything that we feel is a negative I guarantee you there is a flip side of way of looking at it. And I'm so glad that you shared your experience, Astrid, because I think you're like the living embodiment of that. Scrappy is in, Wendy, yes. Um, by the way, Nisha had a question for you, and then we're going to move on to some a little bit of live coaching. The question was, do you recommend a specific format to follow when writing your personal pitch? And I'll add my two cents after that. Um, I don't really recommend, like there wasn't one. I did watch, like I rewatched the coach that was talking about it and she just had like only do like three or four. I think she said three at the beginning and really those are your strongest and then start to pivot really because they're really asking about your um, career. So you really want to move into it. And then what I just did was kind of transition into it. I'll see if I can, like I said, I'm on my phone. So let me see if I can find a way to copy it over um, and um, move it over to this. And I just said like, you know, here, I just want to bring over kind of, this is what I am. And then at a high level, and I said, from now from a career side of things, this is, you know, I've been a marketing manager for uh, my whole career, and I've also done some product management, and then I moved into at my last job at this company, I was this, and I worked on these type of events, and I did this, and I had um, one direct report in Amsterdam, and I kind of moved on to try to bring some things, and I brought it quickly over into the um, career type of things that I wanted them to know as well. 
I'm going to put the coach's name into the chat. I just looked it up. Eloi and we'll all, I'm going yeah. to gonna reach out to her and try to get her um, part of these job seeker support groups. I think I want to get some guest speakers in because um, I'm sure you're all, you know, at a certain point, you're like, Claire, we, we, we've heard you enough. So, but I'm so, <laughs> uh, thank you Astrid for doing this and good for you for Welcome. going on your little uh, quasi staycation. Great. Thanks. Ah, and Carolyn, welcome. This is your first meeting. Um, so I'm going to hop you off the first remove pin from first screen. Okay. So let's do a little experiment of live coaching today. Whoa. I just finally got my web camera working and you know, now I got a big head. Um, so let us see, uh, who is here who I wanted to live coach. So let me just, uh, I have Katie. Um, okay. So let's see if Katie Palmer, we got, hold on. Where okay, let's see. All right, Lauren Dolnik. Well, I won't say last names, but Lauren D. Um, we got Katie P. Katie P. We got Jasmine J. Aaron D. And. Poonam Patel. Oh, sorry. I keep saying I'm not going to say last name. Don't worry, guys. It's not going on YouTube. Um, so this is this is private just for us. Um, of those names, I just said those were the questions that were submitted that I feel like um, represent a good swath of other questions. And I think we can dig in a little bit together and make this really interesting and helpful for folks. Any of those people here and want to jump on with me? <laughs> I think I saw Poonam. I'm here, Katie. All right, Katie, let us begin. Do you mind if I bring you up to the first screen? So let us uh, do, 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 do. Always have a moment of, um, da, da, da. it's so funny. I just saw like Laura Greer just like was so smiley and happy. And I thought, but it was just a photo. I thought she was like so enthused about what we were doing. Maybe she is. Okay, there we go. Ask to unmute. All right, Katie, first of all, gorgeous plants. You clearly are good at taking care of things in your life and you're detail oriented. I can already see that right there. <laughs> yes. Um, I also see Millie raise their hand, but I think maybe Millie, if you want to just put your question in the chat, if you have one, or maybe you accidentally raised your hand, we're going to stay focused on some just like live rapid coaching for the time being. So Katie, um, do you remember what your question? Also, thank you for coming. I, I think you've come to a number of these and commented on LinkedIn. And you will have great, you will have, get an opportunity out of the place, get paid. I have no doubt. Um, but do you remember what your question was? And if so, do you want to just state it? Otherwise I'll go ahead and read it out loud. Um, not entirely. So I would okay. love for you to read it out. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the question was getting an interview. I have 10 plus years of successful freelance experience, but need to translate that to hiring managers. So for everybody listening, who's like, I'm not a freelancer. This is not relevant to me. It is relevant to you because we're talking about translating experience, right? Which was a bit of a theme from Astrid. So talk to me a little bit, I think about what, um, where you feel like the block is happening. Um, and if you, you know, is it something that you've decided is a block or have you actually had some feedback from, you know, rejections of, of somehow they felt there was a disconnect from your freelance to full-time love to dig into this a little bit more with you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, love the way that you phrased those questions. And now that I hear it, I think I'm creating the block. Okay. Um, so my work has been across writing, editing and creative producing, like commercial producing, um, and I've also had work previously as a W-2 full-time employee. So I think in the way that I present myself and build my resume, both like tactically on paper and how I talk about it, I don't know uh, how to group all of my projects and experience to, you know, align with what they're looking for. So like I've experimented with, do I put it all under my freelance company and sort of highlight the accomplishments, highlight the projects, highlight the brands I work with, or do I present it as separate brands that I've worked with all through the years um, because they're wonder they're very recognizable brands and that gets people's attention pretty often um, to sort of legitimize the work that I've done because I feel like, because I'm a freelancer, uh, 
it's not as legitimate. Like people don't see, oh, I recognize that company. I understand that work. They see me and they're like, I don't understand, um, you know, how she did the work or what the work is. And I don't know if I'm creating that in my head or, or not asking. I, I don't know what that disconnect is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does okay. That make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Although I'm just going to reiterate um, from what I uh, just to confirm that I've understood. So it sounds like your initial question is about presentation with the resume. Is that right? But there's a deeper question, I think, behind it, which is fear yeah. of not being, quote, legitimate, which is actually what I want to dig in a little bit more about why you think that is, um, what's underneath it. And by the way, for anybody who is contemplating, is this in my head or am I creating it? Don't think that that's a delegitimizing thing. Like if it's a feeling that you have, it's real. But does that mean it's something that needs to be a blocker? No, we can find ways around it and to move through it. Um, So just because no one else told you that, you know, and you're telling it yourself doesn't mean it's quote, not true, right? Cause it's at least like a feeling that you have, but does it mean that it needs, it's like a, a thing that has to be a blocker, not necessarily. So yeah. So for you, what is the delegitimizing aspect of it? And then I'll dig into how to present. Hmm. Um, I, I know I don't want silence, but I'm, I'm thinking on the spot. I, and I guess, um, it's just the fact that it, it could be a confidence. I know it's a confidence thing feeds into this, but that it's not connected. I see other people who are applying to jobs. I, I know lots of other people have solid like W2 experience at various companies and progressive promotions. And I don't have that for myself. I have a career I'm proud of for 10 years, but it doesn't look like everyone else and, and what I think they expect to see. Um, so I don't have those titles. I don't have those promotions and I don't have those like stamps of, I worked at that company for five years type of thing. So mm-hmm. that feeds into how I talk about myself. Yeah. Um, and just to confirm when you are, when you say W2, this is you on, you know, direct to client or is this you being a, a third party hired by another agency or what's been your, where I know I'm getting a little bit into the weeds of it, but what's mm-hmm. been your relationship to the brand? Both. I've had direct to client, um, clients hire me directly through the years. And I've had a number of working through an agency, like yeah. a small agency or a, a creative agency of some kind. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to now get you really fucking psyched about <laughs> your experience you have such unique perspectives. You've seen it from a lot of different sides. That is so great. You have not been, I have a certain role that I've moved up in a linear fashion, therefore have only had one perspective on the industry. No, not only have you seen it from multiple sides, you have had to sustain yourself as a business. That is extreme. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing Christina nodding right now and probably some other people not to call you out, Christina. Um, but I, I just like, it is so hard to be a business owner. So as a business owner to another business owner, this is incredibly difficult. So not only have you seen perspective on the industry, you also know what it's like to pay your taxes, be careful about margins, like you're scrappy and resourceful. Like the whole point that I think is that's important to make when we're applying for work is showing that we understand how we can impact the business bottom line for freelancers and business owners. We every day are thinking about the bottom line. We have to, otherwise we're not going to survive. So you can really, really tell that story of your sensitivity to knowing that everything that you do for a brand, every like hour that you spend has to be accounted for. And especially in an economy and in an industry where we're getting, you know, people are a bit nervous about, you know, spending time and money. You are really, the word that's coming to mind is, and I don't know if it's the right word, but like, you're very judicious with it. Like you, you're going to be, have a, a level of empathy and sensitivity to that, that is going to stand out. Whereas if you're coming from a big agency that like pads their hours and is kind of bloated, you know, 
I'm not sure as a hire, I would feel like, is this person going to waste my resources or not? Do they really know what it's like to keep the eye to the bottom line? So I think just from the like competence standpoint, you have a lot to stand on. Now, of course, the next question of like, how do you present it? And we'll get into that in just a minute. But I really do think for anybody who has freelanced or worked in any kind of like scrappy environment, especially in this economy, you have an advantage in the story that you tell. So I think that's fantastic. You've also, in being able to see different aspects of the business, you're going to be very good at communicating wherever you end up going. And you're going to tailor your resume and your cover letter and your interview to the job that you apply to. So the story you tell will change a little bit based on where you're going. But I think a through line is that you're probably very good at managing multiple moving pieces and different stakeholders and like the communication that's and the sort of diplomacy that's required to communicate effectively with those different stakeholders. That's a very valuable skill set that is not, I think some people are naturally good at it for sure, but you have to hone that over time. And usually that's, you know, you've seen behind the curtain in a lot of different aspects, having been a business owner, um, especially in what you do. So I would say the your biggest challenge actually might be their concern that you are, and I'm just going to have you kind of refute me on this, would be loyalty. Like, is she going to have, does she want to work for somebody else, right? Um, you know, having worked for yourself for a while, you know, you've been autonomous. Like, is there going to be, you know, are you doing this to get I don't know, stable paycheck, but like, you're not going to really care. You really still want to do your own thing. Okay. So that would actually be the thing you would want to proactively perhaps address. The other thing could be, does she play well with others? Like we know that you can communicate with all these different stakeholders. You've had to, you know, in given how you've gotten your work, but are you super, super independent? Like how collaborative are you? How will you be in a team? How about in a culture? That's not the culture you've set, Right. So I actually think those might be more of the challenges that you're going to have to think about when you make, when you present yourself, as opposed to the, how do I, you know, yeah, that am, am I like, have I not been in like the linear path? Um, from what I've said, how, how much of that did, was there anything in particular that resonated? Yeah, that really resonates. Um, and I'm smiling after you saying, um, kind of proving loyalty mm -hmm. and will I stick around because I know how amazing it is to, you know, be in charge of my own time. There's pros and cons to everything, but, um, but I, I think, um, I mean, I'm going on this journey. I'm, I'm putting all my, my eggs in this one basket of looking for one job, which feels very scary for me in my life and, and like almost super risky and, but it has pros that I'm really looking forward to. And, and at this stage of my life, they align with my goals. And I'm sort of, I'm setting aside my freelance work for a reason. And I think now it's all about finding that culture that I fit with, finding people that I enjoy working with every day. And I'm really open to industry and work product. Like I just want to do something that I'm I can take my skills with me that I'm curious about and stay curious about and be challenged with people that I enjoy, which feels like a tall order. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, something I like that you just said that I think will be helpful for everybody is, you know, when you think about the pros and cons of something or how scary something is, as long as the pros are super aligned with your values and goals and you can stay focused on that then you're doing the right thing. So it's not about the absence of fear or the absence of, or like smaller cons. Like, honestly, you might have a massive amount of lists of cons, but the, the things that are the pros are just so aligned with your values and goals more so than the cons, more so than the fear that you're willing to put in the work to go towards it. I think um, one great way to get ahead of the, like, is she going to be collaborative slash fit in slash be loyal is the fact that you have made the decision to apply to this job, whatever it is, when you have that interview, I mean, put it in the cover letter, it's, and you can kind of fluff them a little bit here, it's, they're so great that it is the reason 
that you are putting aside working for yourself and all the great things that can come with that, right? So they can feel like, wow, I'm, it's almost like you're happy being single and you're like, I'm willing to give up my happiness being single because you are so great, right? So it's not the sake of just having a full-time job you can really make it about them, their work product, their work culture, you know? So I, I think, again, this is my earlier point of like, sometimes the thing that we're nervous about can be what we dig into as like the silver lining of it or or the, the sort of positive side of it. And it's like, yeah, I did enjoy working for myself, X, Y, Z reasons and how I grew, but I, you are so great that I am excited to work for you. Um, let's talk about, and then I'll move on to our, uh, whoever, uh, Lauren and Poonam, and I think we had Jasmine. Um, in terms of presentation, uh, in terms of presentation of how you want to show this, I mean, most resumes, they're either done what's called chronological order or functional order. Um, yours, I mean, you have a portfolio and I don't know exactly what kind of work you do. So you also want to make sure if you don't have a website with visuals, beautiful visuals, because chances are they're going to be looking for that as well with, with your industry. Um, but chronologicals, that's obvious in the past, you know, 10 years, 10, 12 years, most recent job that you did, where it was, and then impact that you had, right? For you, if that doesn't feel so compelling and you really want to illustrate buckets of skills, buckets of strengths that you have thematically, then do that, right? And underneath, so if it's, I'm making this up for myself now. So if it was like, part of what I do is event planning, part of what I do is speaking, part of what I do is community leadership, okay? Those would be my buckets. And underneath those buckets, you could have the brand that you worked for and the year, what you did, but what's less important about what you did, it's really then the impact that you had quantified as best as you can. So everybody remember that. It's not just a laundry list of, you know, your responsibilities, because guess what? Anybody can say that. That's not the point. What we need to know is either we need to know a little bit, maybe of how you did it, but most importantly, what happened when you did it? What happened? That's what recruiters are looking for. What happened? So you might also want to experiment too, like create two versions of your resume. And, you know, I think let's do a job seeker support group where we're maybe sharing some resumes or, you know, I'm sure you've connected with people from this where you can get feedback on it. And also, you know, connect with recruiters, do, do some, you know, LinkedIn networking and ask somebody to tell you which of the two is most compelling, you know, treat. I think this is just such a great life journey lesson experience in general treat everything like an experiment, just like I'm doing right now here, guys. Like I was like, let's try something new with a live coaching. Maybe it goes terribly, but guess what? We tried it and we learned from it, you know, better than just staying in our head. So I would urge you, you know, the things that you've been sort of going back and forth on, if you can give yourself the challenge of treating it like an experiment and design that experiment, you're going to get some actual responses and data. And then the confidence will build based on the responses that you got. So hopefully that's helpful. I love that. That's super okay. helpful. Yeah. Katie, you're the best. So good to see you. I'm going to read your screen. Um, Millie, your hand is still up. I don't know if there was something that you wanted to say, but I'm just noticing. I don't know how to turn it off. I was oh. like trying. To... <laughs> All right. Lower hand. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, okay, so I have, um, dun, 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 dun. Um, let us see, and then we'll go into breakouts. We got Jasmine, we got Aaron, Lauren, and Poonam. Anybody else want to come up with me uh, for those ladies? Dun, 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 dun. And if not, we will go into breakouts and that's okay too. I just want to give for those who sent in their questions before. And I do see, uh, I do see some of them here though. I see Jasmine here. I don't want to, if you guys don't want to come up, that's fine. But I'm just going to give you one more minute to do live coaching with me. And thank you, Katie, for doing that. That was probably a little scary and you're very brave. And again, like I said, this is not going on YouTube. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. So it sounds like nobody else wants to do live coaching, but, uh, Oh, Carolyn. Um, yeah, Carolyn, let's do, um, Carolyn, I saw you, what you sent in before. Let's do you next time. Okay. Um, 
because I think, because you've had some intense layoffs, seven layoffs, I think. And I think that might be a longer back and forth between the two of us. So make sure you sign up for the next live speaking uh, or next um, support group. Speaking of which, we're not going to be doing next week because it's Memorial Day, um, but we'll do the week after, as always. Okay, so let's just do breakouts now. I'm going to go ahead and stop the record real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, Zoom was a little wonky for a few of you your patients. And then also just a couple, I think there may have been some issues in signing up for this event, right? That's because I had canceled last time and then opened up ticket sales, but then didn't up, update ticket sale deadlines. So next time should be easier. Speaking of next time, um, let me just put in the chat real quick. We have free events happening every single day um, on LinkedIn. You might not know about it because I do a terrible job of promoting ladies get paid stuff. Uh, even though I'm have a marketing background, I'm not very good at it. Um, so I go live every noon Pacific time on our LinkedIn page with a different coach who approaches the mission of earning more and living better in a different way. So I just posted on in our chat um, this week's coaches. Um, we've got everything from like stress and time management to like understanding and leveraging your innate strengths. Um, last week. I mean, you'll see all the recordings on LinkedIn, also on our YouTube channel. Um, we'd have, you know, everything from like investing strategies to like spiritual healing. I mean, really it runs the gamut, super interesting people. Um, and then, yes, I mean, it's recorded. So you can always watch it after the fact and then comment on it, ask a question, um, you know, tag the person, tag the coach. I mean, they're looking to connect with you. And we have... Uh, this is happening Monday through Friday, although on Fridays, it's just me sharing the lesson that I learned. Um, and we have them scheduled through end of July. So, I mean, this is free. It's 30 minutes every day. Just a nice way to learn something new, take a break and connect with people. I know we're technically at time, but, you know, my bad on, on not managing time correctly. So let's stick around a couple minutes more for those who um, are available. If you met somebody that you were inspired by and you want to introduce them, um, please do so. You uh, have the floor um, and we'll give just a couple minutes for that. Or if there was something you learned, you know, the other person shared a piece of wisdom that you think would be helpful for the group. Um, and of course, as you share, please introduce yourself and tell us how we can help you. So next couple minutes, the floor is for anybody who wants to take it. Um, I think you have the ability to unmute yourself. If you don't, to just raise your hand. Jennifer? I, yes, my connection's extremely unreliable. So apologies if I get knocked off, but I want to say I was paired with Darcy for the first round and I just met her a couple of weeks ago through Ladies Get Paid and we've been um, meeting up um, outside of Ladies Get Paid as well because we're both in Chicago and it's been fabulous. I want to say thank you, Claire. Like I'm a super sensitive person. I hate Zoom stuff and like I didn't know what I was going to get into when I joined this group, but it's been so amazing because I've met really transformational people in my life and Darcy's one of them uh and so I was really it was good omen to see her um it seems like it was a coincidence but yeah yes and by the way I want to start uh Ashley my co-founder and wife is not letting me do this right now because I have to focus on some other things first but something I am working on is what I'm calling goal groups which will be in-person meetups where you have a curated group of people, you're all working on whatever goal it is that you have. It doesn't have to be unemployment or fun employment, um, but you have a consistent schedule of meeting times where you can connect in person. There'll also be a virtual component because I think I love that we have virtual as an option, but nothing beats in person, I think, for making that deep connection. So I'm so glad that you've taken advantage of that. Um, and good to see you, Darcy, um, as well. Um, and thanks, Jennifer, and thanks for being patient. I see Debbie raised your hand, so I'd love to welcome you. Thank you. Um, I chatted. We all need to send positive vibes to Victoria. She has an interview this week, and she's really nervous. Um, so she has she's doing kind of some of the same things that Katie was doing, but instead of going from freelance to W two, she's going from fashion to computer design, computer interface user interface. So um, we need to send her positive vibes. And um, along going to Claire, what you just said about in-person and virtual groups, I know that I just told the per second person I met with that when you join the group, um, the ladies get paid, 
there are different groups you can join based on where you live too. So um, there kind of is that working toward that opportunity of in-person meetings already kind of set up. Yeah. Where, where, where is that? Is yeah. That? yeah. So um, I need to make sure you all have the invite. We have a Slack group. We've had a Slack group since 2016 with almost 60,000 people on it. And they've exchanged over 3 million messages. It's crazy. It's and not, in my opinion, the best way. So we then created another group, also free, called Circle. I don't know if anybody's on it. Um, and it is beautifully organized, but it's difficult to get people to go from something they've known, even though it doesn't work that well, to something new. That being said, I think we have well over 10,000 people in Circle. Like I, I'm being hard on myself here. Like we have a really good community and there are different channels based on where you live. I don't know if there's anything in Bend, Oregon, really. Um, so I need to start, um, just so you all know, ladies get paid. It's just me and my wife. Like we don't have any employees. Like there's a reason we're not doing more because we just don't have the capacity for it. In a perfect world, and this is my goal, it is to build up to something where you're not just finding people on your own in the community, but you know we can really start to give you the tools for, hey, I'm in Bend. I just need five other awesome women and we'll give you a toolkit. And you're like, this is when we're meeting. Here are our, here's our agenda. Here are our goals. You know, So something where you can really self-organize, but you're given the tools to do it. Yeah, because sometimes it can be hard to start um, or to stay structured. Um, uh, so yeah, I appreciate, yeah, Meredith just dropped the link in there. Let me know when you, I'm going to send you all an email because everybody should have access to it, but you got to go through our website. You got to go through ladiesgetpaid.com to get there. So when you click on this link, you may not be able to access it unless you've already been there before and logged in. So no stressing, I'll send you all an email about it. And if you have any questions, respond to that email. Um, I'm also doing a new thing, which is after our sessions, um, in that email I send you, I'm also going to give you a link to a post that I make on LinkedIn, recapping a lesson that I learned from this conversation. I would love for you to comment on it because that's a way that you can connect with the people who were here. And also that's a way that I'm growing my own Facebook, or excuse me, LinkedIn, which is something y'all should be doing too. Making a post on LinkedIn about something you learned and tag people. So instead of just us, you know, keeping things in our inboxes or in a private online group, let's like help other people, you know, let's put it out there in public. And so I'm going to probably write about me experimenting with the live coaching and something, you know, I think it was cool. I also think there are people who are probably really hesitant to do life coaching with me because they're afraid if they share what they're going through and it gets out there, it could hurt their employment chances. So maybe this experiment I did doesn't work, you know, as a format. I don't know. But I think that experimental mindset is a really helpful one for people to have. So if you would be so kind as to open my email when I send it and then click on that link, read my post and comment, and you can comment with something you learn or just introduce yourself. This is a way, because I know people have also been sharing spreadsheets. Hey, let's stay in touch. All good and fine, but like do it on LinkedIn. Like that's where everybody is hiring, you know? So like share who, you know, you don't need to go into like deep, dark secrets of who you are, but like do share pieces of who you are because you are being hired, you know, back to like full circle Astrid. She talked about her personality, you know, is part of the selling point, not just what she does, but who she is. I know we're 10 minutes over, but this is, this is my favorite part of the whole time. And we all get to talk. So I don't know. I just did a Southern accent. That was weird. Um, anyone else? <laughs> yes. Um, Perry, or uh, tell me, I butchered yeah, your name. Perry's great. Right. Um, okay. Yay. Well, I just wanted to say this was my first meeting and well, first, yeah, first meeting, but I remember following ladies get paid when I still lived in New York. And uh, I always recommended it to my friends who are looking for freelancing or looking to get paid better at work so uh for years I remember when you had like the in-person meetings in the city and uh always telling my friends you should go and network so even though you really had it gone even though you never went it could have been shit. I <laughs> dealt with a lot of social anxiety so the virtual meetings are really nice because I am also in another country now and uh out of the craziness that is what New York is dealing with, 
But um, yeah, it was really nice to meet everyone. It was really cool to hear different stories, to hear about other people's success and struggle. So I just wanted to share that. It gives me a lot of hope because I, I'm sure everybody experiences, especially when you're looking for a new job, whether or not you have one or you have clients, you don't have clients, whatever it is. Um, I was talking to Cecilia and I said, how are you? And she's like, oh, it's going. And I was like, yeah, when you're looking for work, it kind of feels like nothing is all that great. So it was really nice to meet you all and hear your successes. And I, I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Yeah, I love it. And you're you're a very brave. Well, you, that was very kind of you to recommend us, even though you weren't, you know, the quality assurance wasn't there since you hadn't yet gone yourself. Um, I would say just now in the time of like when, quote, life is just going, that's probably because we're focused on where we want to go. Well, we're here. This is where we're at in all of us. Like where, you know, and I've been talking about this obsessively and I'm just going to say it again. I know this is hard to do. But if we can release the attachment to the outcome, whatever it is, getting a job, or in my case, I find out on Friday if I'm pregnant, okay? Like I'm obsessed. We're all obsessed with like, I need this outcome. I don't want to live my life waiting for the thing at the end to tell me if I'm going to be okay. This is it. It's this moment. Focus on the connections you're making to other people, the connections you're making to yourself, what you're learning in this process. The things that you're really afraid of, confront them. If you are having a hard time with time management and energy management, because applying for a job is a fucking full-time job and you already have a full-time job, great opportunity to really get better at time and energy management. This is a skill that you will need for life, okay? So again, I know we're, we really want the outcome, but we almost got to get let go of the outcome. It's really like nuanced thing, right? Where we have a goal and, you know, keep your eye on the prize, so to speak, but don't do it with blinders. Be in the moment and really dig into what are we actually living right now? Like this is the quality of life. It's the moment to moment, but that's a reminder and it's work. So also I know somebody had mentioned like, I need a break and all that. Good. My challenge to you is how are you going to give yourself a break? Spend 30 minutes today detailing out ways that you give yourself break and give yourself life and then schedule it. Like that is helping you find a new job. It is like this process right now is that's why I'm kind of obsessed with the whole job seeking process because so much of the agita of life comes up during this time. The existential questions about our worth and what we're doing and who we are, right? Hurt our relationship with our money, right? Just like I love salary negotiation, not so much for the money part, but for what it, the questions it makes us confront about what we believe we deserve. So there's a lot of like wisdom that you are gaining in this time, a lot of growth that you're gaining in this time, which is why it's very tiring and hard. But if you can try to see it as, wow, I get to get gritty with myself here, that's pretty cool. As opposed to just going into work, blinders on, and then all of a sudden life has passed you by. So you've woken up to life. Again, it's hard. It's bright. The lights are bright right now. Probably want to shut your eyes and take a, na a nap. And that's okay too. You should take those naps. But this is also a really interesting, exciting time. Millie, I'm sorry that you got another rejection letter. That's where you get the, uh, you know, some. I got a rejection from my second, the book that I, so this book that I wrote, I wrote a, a proposal for a second book that got rejected. But that rejection put me on a really good path, actually. So there's going to be some interesting stuff that you take from that rejection. Victoria, keep us posted, my love. Really, we got, you know, whatever happens, happens. Just well, think of practicing for the next interview, whatever, yeah. whenever. Yeah. And refining okay. your pitch. Yes. And yeah. also I like to think of interviews as not interviews, but rather the, the imagine you were already hired and this is the first meeting to figure out how you how they're going to best leverage your strengths. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a good perspective. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Now we're 15 minutes over and I'm procrastinating. So from other things I need to do, open my email later today, comment on my LinkedIn post, stay in touch. I won't see you next week, but I'll see you after that. And in the meantime, you know, we'll see you on LinkedIn. You got this and um, much love. Bye y'all. Thank you.